you really start getting into things when it's alive. But you don't have to just randomly say, this is energy, this is anger. You can deal with it. Most people do in astrology. Anger, anger comes up at these times, frustration, all this volume, use of energy. After, and you can intuitively try to work with that just by watching the angles. But if you're seeing these phases, you can see how to direct it, how to make sense out of this. How, how to, if you've got a teenager that's angry or that's depressed or that's semi-suicidal or sitting around, you realize they're not using energy, you can start trying to see their attitude on why they're dealing with things and how you might be able to work and start building up a little bit in the new direction. Whether it needs subjective for, uh, subjective influence or it needs some functional influence. Somebody needs to stop by and encourage them or you have to plant some ideas that reach deeply and affect their depth. How do you get a kid out of the house? How do you get a bad partner out of the house? How do you get out of the house if you're a bad partner and don't want to get out of the house? Mars is always a challenge. There's always force. There's always things going to happen. It's always dynamic. Or it's really passive and inert. But if it's passive, see, here's how it works. Depression, more of a Saturn thing, but depression, I can't do anything, so I'm depressed. I can never do this. I'll never see any depressed. So we get Saturn Jesuits weighing on our Mars. It's depression. Depression is really inert. And it's a mask of anger. Why am I depressed? Because I'm really mad as hell, but I can't do anything, so I'm depressed. I can't get even. I'm smaller. They're bullies. I can't get it. It's not fair. I'm depressed. I have to give up things. But depression is a mask of sorrow. It, I mean, depression is a mask of anger. You're really mad as hell because you can't do anything. You're depressed. And you have to use energy or force to get that anger expressed. doesn't mean you have to get even. Good. But it doesn't mean you have to do something else or push that, find a way of channeling that energy out or it implodes and makes you sick. Okay. Now, anger is a mask for sorrow. You're mad as hell. Anything you do out of anger is going to be extra forceful, extra assertive, and there's not going to be much sensitivity or sympathy around it. It can get things done, but if you force too hard, who wants it? You burn out, you burn muscles, you push too hard. Like So many things can happen. So anger is a mask for sorrow. Why am I mad? I'm mad because really, I got my feelings hurt. I'm sad, but I don't want to deal with the feelings. It's too deep. It's too profound. I get hurt too much. So I'm going to make a judgment out of that sorrow. And I make a judgment. And, and because they did it to me, I blame them and I'm mad at them. And you put it out as anger and revenge at, a, at something. That's a block and a mask for preventing you from getting to your sorrows. Well, who wants to get the sorrows? Everyone's running away from the sorrows. Amazing what you can do with addictions and what problems you can get into by running away from sorrows. But sorrow is the gateway to compassion. You can't get to compassion unless you've had so the experience of sorrow. The experience of depression is a, is a mask or a gateway to the experience of anger. Anger is a mask or a gateway to the experience of sorrow. And from sorrow, it can blossom into compassion. So if you run into really violent things, you've been raped, you've been violent, you've been beat up, you've been shot, something happened. At a certain point, you're so angry about it. When you finally get angry, you decide, I wouldn't want that to happen to anyone else. I wouldn't want that to happen to my worst friend. I wouldn't want anyone else to get hurt like that. Wow, you have the beginnings of compassion. You have that compassionate wisdom starts guiding the Mars and makes a whole different life. So it's good to have in mind this depression, anger, sorrow, and then compassion. It puts all the depression, all, depression is negative, negation of compassion. Anger is a negation of compassion. Sorrow is a block for compassion. It's just a gateway to still masking it. And how do we get mature enough to be compassionate and open and not dumping all these energy, all our difficult experiences or the problems in the world on it? Just because there's wars and people are killing each other and women being raped and people are being sold to slaves and all these battles are going on doesn't mean you have to feed it. There's ways of working to try and work against it. Sometimes you can take social positions. Sometimes you have to work with your writing or your own ideas, but you don't have to propagate it. Wow. This is a Mars lesson. What's really Jupiter learning how to guide Mars properly? If wisdom can begin to see, and it usually takes us a few negative cycles of Mars or some really bad experiences before we learn it's really not worth those experiences. How many years do you have to use the alcohol or do Lose the drug before you learn. It's messing up your life. No one's going to turn around and say to me, I've got to change this around. You know, then they have the, even in, in AA, they have that expression, uh, God, give me, let me, give me, 
help me to control the things I can control, help me to realize the things I can't control, and to have give me the wisdom to know the difference. So wisdom, it guides our actions. Actions, everybody makes mistakes, everybody messes, everybody hurts things, hurts himself, hurts others, has anger, has rage, has these things. They're being packaged in different ways. Now, psychology tends to think everybody's supposed to be a harmonious, social, functional person in the world around us. And that's the solution. It's not. It's not for some people, for 50% of people, that may be so. But for the other 50%, they've got to find answers within themselves, not in their functionality, but in their seeds within themselves. Some of these things, you, you end up seeing this and you puzzle, but whenever you're puzzling about it, what am I going to do? Look back at the natal chart, check the angles, the IC, the, what motivates someone, what they're projecting out, how they're reacting, how they're functional, what's functional. What's, go back and go through the steps. If you look at it all, it's too much information at once. If you're going to do one step at a time, you say, oh, that's applying like this. Oh, rising and setting. Okay, above or below. Oh, it's looking like that. Oh, you can start to see the repercussions of these in time. This is incredible. It's incredibly useful, but it takes time and experience to get to know this. So once you've done your chart and you've got all the things you're trying to begin to put this perspective, our next level is putting these together to figure out how to get the wisdom to guide the Mars, to get experiences that will work in our favor, not against us. That won't, you put energy out that hurts other people, it's gonna come back and hurt you. You know, if this goes beyond lifetimes even, like it's enough to see it within a lifetime, but take the woman that got raped and killed on a, violently raped and killed on a bus in India, by five guys, five or six guys. Well, here's one woman that had this horrible karma. She got raped, she got raped, she got killed. She died of this horrible situation. Well, okay, paid off, a lot of karma. But here's five guys who are gonna have to have seven, four or five very difficult lifetimes to get to assimilate the results of that experience. Now, the woman may come up mad and come back next time and be more aggressive and want to dish it out, or she may get beyond it. That soul is not a man or woman, that soul. But the souls of the five what, rapists are going to have to come back, and each one of them are going to have to have one lifetime where they're the woman, and they're going to get violently raped and killed, or something equivalent. And they're going to have to have another lifetime when they're the parent of someone that that happens to. And they're going to have to have another lifetime when... Um, there, it happens to them, it happens to their parents. When it's your friend or your brother or sister that does it, there's a few different ways you can see the sorrow that was created out of this before their compassion can come in. There's an awful, and for that one experience, there's five times more violence going to be happening for the next four or five generations. Wow, that's sorrow. That's difficulty. But there's always ways to take this to another level, but not everybody's ready to. They want to fight it on the level that they have. You have to be able to tune in and see it. So these are the tools that let us move towards it. Um, and you see, in going at this, if you just took the planet in the house, you say, oh, Mars is there, the aggression is coming just in this house. Yeah, that's how a lot of astrology has just worked. But boy, it loses an awful lot of information by not seeing these implications, these phases and these changes. Because these changes are really just like breathing in and out. They're natural adjustments at that time. When someone has those changes, going, they're ready for those changes, whether they're fighting it or not. It depends on their natal chart, how they work their Mars. But by the time it's there, it's meant to be there. By the time there's a blow up, it's healthy that that blow up is there. By the time there's a a forceful situation. It's healthy that it's there. You have to try and do things. You're going to have to face it, deal with it, and eventually learn from the repercussions of it. And in time, when you've had enough bad things happen, you learn how to not make the bad things happen. Sometimes you have all the good things happening, you're this makes the good things, and sometimes it doesn't prepare you when a bad thing happens, and you don't know how to deal with it. But it's your desire for experience. It's what you're setting up. It's what you're putting out. What you put out will come back. What you don't put out will come back. You can be living with someone, you're putting out the energy to satisfy them, you're being sexual, you're being satisfied. Wow, they're being impressed by the energy. Well, wow, sure, I'll take that. Then you pull it back. How could you do this? How could you leave me alone? How could you not? I need you, I want you. And you take pulling this away. I don't want to do this. And you get the power balances of relationships. Who's doing what? Who's giving it out? Who's taking it back? Who's fighting over it? which way it's going? Who's ready for the change? Uh, this is a textured mechanic. It's 
it's really gross, it's violent, but it's really alive and exciting to work with Mars. The solution is if you can't see the Jupiter and Saturn inside of it, all you're seeing is the disruptions and you don't see how to work with this to make the, the Mars align with the Jupiter and the Saturn and get the phases all syncing with each other. You can always diminish a crisis of a, a specific planet on an angle or a specific disruption by saying this is the phase it's coming from, this is the phase that it's going to. And if you can see the phase you're coming from and you see the phase you're going to, it minimizes the crisis. I mean, I'm stuck here, it's changing, it's not going this way. And that change is actually trying to make you just go to the next phase, not hold on to the old. So this phasal relationship, crises and phases. You accentuate the phases to diminish the crises. You accentuate the crises to make people aware that the phase they're going to is leading to trouble and they've got to deal with that and that's going to change the phase. This is healing. Okay, so that, that's it for Mars. Next week, it's a different week, we're going to deal with the sun. And the sun, we're not going to do the sun in a cycle like we do with the Mars. Okay, because the sun has too many things. I mean, when we look at we looked at the angles. I'm not going to go around through all my chart anymore. But but you see how much happened with this with Mars. It's twice as much with the Sun. Because Mars is every two years, Sun's every year. It's too too much to go into like that. You wouldn't use the Sun for predictions, but the Sun is very useful to know. So what I want you to do is get your computer and print the Sun, making all the Ptolemaic aspects, conjunction, square, sextile, square trying in opposition, all five aspects, and just put them in for the year, for 2019, from January 1st to December 31st. Just everything that happened through the whole year. The sun to every planet and to the, yeah, and to the, and you can, and to the angles of your chart. And you get a date for each one, and it'll put a, a calendar for your year. So I want you to do that, then we're going to come into how to, like when I started this, I had to, I had, whoa, 10 years before computers were around that were doing this, they could do some of this stuff. And even then they didn't do adequate graphics to what I like to see. So we're gonna work on the sun, the sun but that's what I want you to get the sun done for your whole year. And um, ne next week I want you to have um, an ephemeris and some working sheets with you. You know, just some blank pieces of paper uh, to to draw in, and uh, yeah, we'll pick it up from there. Okay, thank you. Good night.